right, welcome to the Retirement Railroad, and that name, my lane, tip of the day. I'm Steve, and, and uh, today we're back at the workbench. And uh, we started <laughs> with three locomotives, and we fixed three, and <laughs> actually we, fixed, we worked on three, uh, four, and two more to fix. So let's look at the uh, uh, next one we fixed here. This is the chassis off the P2K uh, Burlington that hit the, uh, the floor, went off the layout, hit the floor, and shattered the uh, uh, drive shaft, uh, rear drive shaft. Now I'm pointing to the front drive shaft, which is uh, a, a uh, U joint. I like my fingers are saying two Y's between each other. Uh, U joint with a, a grooved shaft between the two. Uh, and the back one, shattered. Uh, the both yokes, uh, U joints shattered, the, the uh, groove shaft shattered, and I, I pretty much rode off uh, this P2K. Well, you know, we uh, ended up fixing uh, a shell and putting a uh, Burlington shell and the decoder and wiring harness from uh, this one into a different P2K, uh, Louisville and Nashville uh, E9. And it worked great. But that got me to thinking, because uh, on yesterday's tip of the day, we stripped down a model power E89, and the drive shafts weren't identical. Instead, they used a dog bone, all right, and two yokes, root yokes for the dog bone. So with the uh, gear puller that uh, arrived from China, uh, I was able to uh, pull off and get those yokes and, and uh, the dog bone and, and numerous other parts and I said you know these might fit on here so uh, I pulled the shattered u-joint uh, connections off from the flywheel and from the back truck and uh, the, the uh, dog bone was just not quite long enough it slide into those yokes a little too far so I modified those yokes with a brass rod that ran across them so it wouldn't allow the dog bone to float too far in where the other side would come out. And uh, put those brass rods on both sides and worked perfect. So here I am after all that uh, test wiring, just hooking up some alligator clips to the uh, motor lead. The uh, power from the trucks is, is all snipped off. Uh, and of course, the first time I try it, like I've always said, it's not how to, how to do things, more about how not to, and then fix them. <laughs> I was uh, putting temporary power to the motor. I tried it, uh, made it go. It, it wouldn't go because one of the alligator clips had come off the lead. Uh, uh, I'm thinking to myself at the time, not knowing what was wrong, that, uh, oh well. <laughs> so much for this effort. But actually, once I did get the power on, uh, both leads, the, uh, and both clips, and gave it some power, here she goes. So now we know, A, the motor's good, and B, that the drive shaft uh, modification I made is gonna work. Now that that's done, I can wire it up and uh, DC for now and uh, make it a viable DC engine, it, at least until I get a decoder. Okay. But you see there, it, uh, the drive shaft works good, the engine runs, it still runs smooth. It actually ran smoother than what I thought it was done. Um, not hip on dog bones, <laughs> but uh, it worked fine. And so now all I got to do is, is uh, wire up the trucks uh, for the power pickups on both sides, front and rear, and uh, for the motor leads, and uh, give her another test. And we jump forward a little bit, and there it is, all wired up nice, snug. We're going to put 
put the shell on it. Now, this is a model power E9 shell on a Proto 2K uh, chassis, so it's not identical and it doesn't clip into place like the P2K shell would, so I gotta do some modifications with that. But there you go, all wired up DC. And uh, all I need to do is get a decoder and uh, wire up the decoder and lights and uh, speaker, and we'll have another viable. E9 for our layout. That'll give us, oh, uh, give me one, two, three E9s and uh, Bakken E7. So, I do love my E units. Uh, as a kid uh, living on uh, a few blocks away from the Burlington, what we call the racetrack, which is three track mainline between downtown, downtown Chicago and Aurora. And uh, you sit out there for hours just watching the uh, trains go by. Freight, all the freights, and I'm talking before Amtrak, all the Zephyrs, uh, the occasional uh, steam, and uh, but you had all the bi-level e, uh, e units pulling the uh, uh, bi-level commuter cars. And uh, my dad took every day from work in downtown Chicago. So. Anyway, that's another viable E unit. Uh, all I need is another trip <laughs> to, to uh, Gulf Coast uh, model trains and uh, get the code report. And I'm uh, sure we're ready to roll. All right, I want to thank you again for joining me here on the Retirement Railroad uh, Matt May Modeling Tip of the Day. I'm Steve, and you all have a great modeling day. Bye now. <laughs>